This is Bamboo Labs Hot Info where X1C printers added the sold as a replacement part to everyone. This means that you can easily order it and potentially use it on any printer that runs on 24 volts. But you might ask, is it any special to do that? Well, currently it is possibly the best bang for the buck that you can get when buying a hotend. I mean, this all-in-one hotend costs like some nozzles alone and the full hotend assembly goes for only 45 bucks. Combine that with a tiny form factor, high flow capabilities, hardened steel nozzle with nickel coating and a fast PTC heater and that can sound too good to be true. So let's dive straight into my use case scenario and talk if it is a right choice for you. I bought the complete hot end assembly and it comes with everything you need. But the first problem is that the fan here is rated for 5 volts and has a 4 pin connector instead of a regular XH 2.54 that most printers use. It is fully understandable why Bamboo went this way, as you can monitor and control the speed with 4 pin fans to ensure a smarter control. But more than 99% of printers don't use that and also run them at way high 24 volts. However, I don't recommend using the original fan, as you can buy parts separately still at a great value. Plus it is a tiny fan that runs very fast and is annoyingly loud. What I like doing is running a bigger fan at a lower speed. It makes less noise and still provides great cooling. I had zero problems even with this janky and repurposed design of mine. But if you want the compactness that the original fan offers, just buy a 24 volt GDS time brand ball bearing fan of the same size. So with cooling sorted out, now we have somehow to attach this hot end. In my scenario, this printer has a Titan extruder, meaning that you need the top round part of a heatsink to mount the hot end. I designed few versions of the adapter. One is designed to be made from metal and I have to say PCB weight did an excellent job here. It looks great and most importantly fits perfectly. They also sponsored this testing video, so huge thanks to them. This version allows you to tighten the hot end as much as M3 screws allow, meaning an extremely rigid assembly that acts almost as a single part. Meanwhile, the printable version is, well, from plastic. This means that you won't be able to clamp the hot end so much, and if you crash the nozzle, it can go out of alignment more easily. Also, ideally, you have to use more durable, stiffer and heat resistant filament. Both adapters are compatible with a BMG extruder, all their clones, and basically everything that has this round mounting type. But most importantly, the adapter will give you exactly the same length as of V6 hotend. This means that it can be an amazing replacement with potentially very few needed modifications. However, don't expect a hassle-free drop-in replacement. You will still have to solder the hotend's wires to your existing wires for the heater and the thermistor. Polarity here doesn't matter as this heater and thermistor are non-polar components. Just make sure not to mix the wires. Heater power wires are way thicker than the thermistors, so it's not hard to separate them. Also, instead of just soldering wires together, you could use those common connectors as the heater already comes with one. The reason I didn't use them is that I have no plans to switch to different nozzle size hotends. I would have to redesign the entire printhead to do that conveniently. So if you are a person who constantly changes nozzle sizes, just be aware of this downside. But what isn't a downside is that you won't need to use a different thermistor. I even didn't have to change anything in the stock firmware where it was configured for a basic glass thermistor like this. At low flow rates and speeds we get very similar shine on the prints. That shows that the filament was heated roughly the same and the thermistor indicates the correct temperature. And from further testing, but this time with Clipper installed, the Bamboo Labs thermistor mostly correspond to the generic 3950. Other people seem to also suggest this one too. But I also saw some say they are using the 104 GT2 in the definition, but from my test it was printing too hot. Also, keep in mind that bamboo hotends come with a tiny thermistor compared to what we used to see in other hotends, so you won't be able to fit it in if you were thinking of doing that. Well then, with everything installed, how it performs in comparison to the volcano-like hotend with V6 aluminum heat block and the copper extension. I'm not going to lie, the results were a little bit of a mixed bag. I started with Anycubic's PLA filament. What you see here are the requested flow rates at different speeds on stock firmware. 
Both hotends seem to have very similar results, but the bamboo hotend had an instant drop in filament surface shine, meaning the filament wasn't heated as much as at the slowest flow rate. Meanwhile, the volcano light hotend had a way smoother transition. But the test with Phil Lab's PLA filament surprised me the most. Here we can see how much worse bamboo hotends seem to be performing. But why this is happening? How a different filament can impact the hotend's performance so much? That led me to test Bamboo Lab's hot end actual flow rates with an extremely convenient benchmarking tool made by Stefan from CNC Kitchen. And what I saw was an insane under extrusion starting at low flow rates. Even with any cubics filament, it was instant, but the stepper motor wasn't skipping during both tests. This obviously indicates that there is a problem somewhere. First, we need to answer the question of why we get such different results with filaments from different brands. Is it the different printing temperature? Well, no, even at the same temperature, one filament performs significantly better than other. So let's take a closer look at how both two filaments look when extruding at the requested 24 cubic millimeters per second. When I saw it up close, it instantly answered all my questions. And by the way, make sure you are following me on Twitter if you are interested in seeing things like this before the video. So what's happening is that this printer had a stock Titan extruder which grips filament only from one side. The filament is deformed so much by extruder's pushing force that it stretches at the gripping points, resulting in a filament slip. And the reason why we see such a big difference between filaments is that the one filament is softer than another, making the slip effect so much more amplified. Ok, so then what about a basic BMG type dual gear extruder? To test that, I redesigned the printhead again and the results were probably what you could expect. Flow rates of the filaments were identical up to 16 cubic millimeters per second with very minimal under extrusion. The white points on the ends indicate where the stepper motor started skipping. And because high attempts equal high flow, there is no surprise that we can avoid that just by printing it hotter. However, all this raises more questions. Is it the extruder's incapability just to force the filament or is the hotend's incapability to properly melt the plastic? In this case, with a Titan extruder, it is mostly the extruder's fault. I mean, we are getting 12% under extrusion even at 8 cubic millimeters per second, which pretty much says it all. And when compared to a more traditional Spider V1 hotend, the flow rates look very similar. Bamboo hotend just required more filament pushing force as it started skipping steps sooner with a slightly bigger motor that also ran at a higher current. So what does all this mean? Is this hotend the right choice for you? First of all, if you expect an easy drop-in replacement instead of V6, then it is not. But if you can crimp some connectors or just solder with wires and flow rates of 15 to 20 cubic millimeters per second is enough, then it is a pretty decent hot end. The fact that with so little it can achieve those flow rates is kinda impressive, to be honest. Plus it has a hardened steel nozzle tip and a fast PTC heater, and when you consider all the aspects like the price, performance, quality and size, it makes a pretty compelling package. If this video was helpful, consider supporting my work on Patreon like plenty of others do or simply by giving a like. With all this information, what are your thoughts on the Bamboo Labs hotend? Would you consider it as a replacement part for your printer? Feel free to leave a comment below. Well, that's all from me and I'll see you next time.